Hey, Dad. Have you ever heard of vertical farming? Sorry, Pumpkin. I have not. What is vertical farming? Well, vertical farming is taking the growing of our food crops from outdoors and putting it indoors. In tall buildings. Why would you want to do that? Well, throughout the world, over 80% of the land that is suitable for raising crops is in use. Historically, some 15% of that has been laid to waste by poor management. Really? Yes. And our water supplies are being contaminated by organic and non-organic farming runoff. By transplanting it all indoors, we can control the environment, including all the nutrients our plants receive. Eliminating farming caused pollution. And that's good, right? Yes. By moving the crops to the indoors and controlling their growing environment, we will be able to increase their yields and prevent crop destruction due to natural disasters, such as massive floodings, protracted droughts, class 4 and 5 hurricanes, and severe monsoons. If population growth stays at its current rate, then over the next 40 years, we are looking at a population of well over 9 billion people. If our current farming practices don't change, we will need about 1 billion hectare acres or nearly 4 million square miles of farming land. That's over 20% more than the size of the country of Brazil. Vertical farming sounds like it could do so much. Yes. With a vertical farm, we could produce crops all year round. And most crops which take a full 4 acres outdoors can be grown in a single indoor acre. Strawberries, for example, could produce 30 times more indoors than they can outdoors. Wow. Vertical farmed food is grown organically. There are no herbicides, pesticides, or synthetic fertilizers used. We can virtually eliminate all agricultural runoff by recycling black water as well as other organic waste materials. We can begin to return big corporation farmland back to nature as it belongs restoring the functions and services of our ecosystem. I can't believe we are not doing this right now. Well, the problem is that moving everything indoors won't be cheap. We have all the technology. We just have to pay to start using it. But if we do, we could generate over 2,600 acres of food each year in, say, a 30-story building. That would be enough to feed over 150,000 adults according to the visionary of the Serenity Vertical Farm Group, Brian Knight. Serenity Vertical Farm? Yes. Brian came up with the concept originally in 1992, while still in high school, as part of a personal thought experiment. But at the time, it was not a part of the big picture, so Brian never put too much more thought into the concept, until a man by the name of Dr. Dixon de Pommier, from Columbia University, laid out a challenge to his students to help solve the problem with people going hungry. And a vertical farm was their solution. This renewed Brian's interest in the idea when he heard about it in 2006. So, what is it that Brian wants to do? His idea is extremely unique. Brian lives in an area where there is an abandoned unused nuclear power plant. His idea was to convert one, or both of the cooling towers into vertical farming facilities. He thought what better way is there to make use of a symbol, so often despised by society, than to turn it into something that can be loved by his community. A means to feed everyone if you will. His idea is to create a completely self-sufficient green building. One that would harvest the abundance of rain in the area to water the crops. One that would generate its own power. Its own power? Yes. Brian wants to use all green technologies to generate the total energy that would be needed to power the farm. Solar, wind, micro-hydro, loom power, and biomass conversion, otherwise known as plasma arc gasification. He also wanted to use flywheel technology instead of toxic batteries to store the excess power so that it could be used when supply is low and to have the rest be donated back to the municipal grid for the community. That all seems like science fiction to me. No. All the technologies he has in his plan are available today. We only need build it. Hmm. Well then how much would building this vertical farm cost? Well, the plan is still somewhat in its infancy. 
Brian and those who are also interested need to still have a lot of conceptual planning done to finalize the total cost to build and equip the farm. However, he is estimating that a good rough number would be $150 million. A $150 million? Whoa! Wait! What? Yes, the startup expense is rather high. But if you look at what large corporations pay to build their facilities, that is not much more or less than what they would pay. You really need to look beyond the short term. Remember that fact about growing strawberries indoors I told you about? Yes. Well, say that we took Brian's building design, which consists of 30 floors and grew nothing but strawberries year-round. If we did that, we would be able to earn around $183.6 million in a single year. If we were to just grow strawberries on a single floor, we could earn $6,120,000, and that is just strawberries. Well, I could see how this idea could pay off in the end. Yes, it could be a very lucrative business. However, Brian also wanted to create a vertical farm that was, for the most part, a non-profit. He wants to automate as much of the process as possible, lower the final cost of the farm's product drastically, due to the farm's abundance, allowing for more people to be able to afford to eat. He also wanted the farm to help to fight hunger where it can. Not just in his local community, but abroad. Even with the level of automation Brian proposes, he estimates that the farm will create anywhere from 800 to 1200 new jobs in his community. So, this farm will be a non-profit 501c3 charity organization, and it will give a whole bunch of good people jobs. Yes, Brian has every intention of turning the farm into a charity, and one of his main reasons for this farm is to be able to create jobs. He also plans to turn the farm into an educational facility. You mean, he plans to have classes there? Yes. Brian has already made contact with both the state's largest universities, and both have expressed an interest. Brian's plan is to have tours for younger students and to have both dedicated classrooms and clean room laboratory space for university students. This all sounds so great. How could I help support this vertical farm project? Well, that is the easy port. Brian has set up several ways for people to offer the financial support the project so desperately needs right now. The easiest way is to go to his favorite crowdfunding website GoFundMe by going to http forward slash forward slash alt url dot com forward slash four s u two m and then selecting the manner in which you wish to make a donation.